Hello, everyone. Uh, once again, thank you to all of those who tried to join this morning. I apologize for the crazy technology issues that I had. Um, I am not sure why my camera was not working at the time. I got off the call, plugged it in, um, and unplugged it about three times, and all of a sudden it seems to be working again. So I am not sure what's going on. I think it's post full moon gremlins. I don't know. Technology gremlins got me today. So thank you so much for those of you who tried to join. Um, I wanted to take a chance to record the presentation for those of you who couldn't join or had to jump off because you had no sound. Uh, obviously, I am Dr. Whitney Bignall. I'm filling in for Dr. Leslie Clack today who is on an accreditation site visit down in Texas, but she will be back next month. Um, so she had scheduled today to talk a little bit about Medicare, especially since open enrollment is coming up October 15th. And I just wanted to um, give you a little bit of information to help you make sure you're taking advantage of all the benefits that are offered under Medicare, as well as to help you decide um, or to maybe give you some questions to think about as open enrollment comes up as to what you want to do with your Medicare plans for next year because you do have the different parts of Medicare. It can be confusing. So hopefully today we'll clarify some of those pieces of information if you um, have lingering questions about the different parts of Medicare and then also help you know which questions to ask to be able to make that decision for your um, enrollment this year. So here's just kind of what we're going to cover, the different parts of Medicare, some of the benefits that I have discovered over the last few years helping my mom that I didn't know was included in Medicare Parts A and B um, to be sure that you're taking advantage of that. Um, getting some help with those deductibles and co-pays, as well as how to find help with making your Medicare decisions coming up, because it is a bit complicated. Um, and trying to figure out which plan is best for you can be really challenging. So full disclaimer, I am not a Medicare advisor by any stretch of the imagination. I haven't gone through that training with the state health insurance program. So what I know I learned in teaching a health policy class a few years ago, as well as seeking care for um, my mom and some of the challenges that we've had navigating the system and things like that. So just want to make you aware of the different enrollment periods that you're going to hear people talk about. So initial enrollment is um, when you turn 65, you're going to get a packet from Medicare about three months before your birthday, and that's going to start your initial enrollment period when you're first eligible, and then that continues until three months after your birthday that you um, have this opportunity to first enroll in Medicare, and at this time you can choose Original Medicare, which is Parts A and B, or you can choose Medicare Advantage Plan, or you can choose a separate um, prescription drug plan at this time. Um, yes, I'm pretty sure about that. I could be wrong about the prescription drug plan, but definitely you can choose either original Medicare or Medicare Advantage plan at this time. After your initial enrollment period, once you are enrolled, you then have an opportunity to make changes each year during open enrollment. So that's coming up shortly, October 15th through December 7th. You probably have seen commercials on television from the different uh, Medicare Advantage plans about what they offer and um, you know things you need to consider. So during open enrollment, and this is something that I really didn't know <laughs> until um, this past year, you can change um, your Medicare Advantage plan, or you can add or stop prescription drug coverage during this time. You can switch from original Medicare to a Medicare Advantage plan. You can 
join a Medicare drug plan if you're in original Medicare and you can switch from one Medicare drug plan to another if you're in original Medicare during this period. So the big thing here is that you can either change your Advantage plan or you can opt into an Advantage plan if you're not currently in one. During the next period, which is um, the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period or the um, general enrollment period is what it's typically called. Um, at this time, you can switch to a different Medicare Advantage plan. You can also, during this time, go back to Original Medicare if you feel like that's going to be better for you. So if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, but your doctors aren't covered and you can't find an Advantage plan that does cover all of your preferred providers, maybe you do need to go back to Original Medicare. So it's from January 1st to March 31st that you can do that. And some people will have a special enrollment period where they can um, enroll in one of these plans outside of either this open enrollment or general enrollment period. That typically happens if you have recently moved to another state because um, the Part D plans and the Medicare Advantage plans are all private insurance companies. And so they are different from state to state. So if you have moved to a new state, then you probably need to look at a different plan to enroll into. And so you would fall into the special enrollment period. There are some other um, times that it may happen but that's typically when people would fall in that special enrollment period. So here are the different parts of Medicare. We're going to talk about each of these a little bit as we go along. So I just have a question for you. Which of the following is included in Medicare Part A? Hospitalization insurance. Is it inpatient hospital stay? Skilled nursing facilities or SNFs? Home health care? Or D, all of the above? And hopefully you have guessed the answer is all of the above. So when I first heard about Medicare, I thought it was just hospital insurance for Part A, but it turns out that um, it can also cover things like a skilled nursing facility, short-term rehab stay, um, in some instances a long-term care hospital. We're not going to go into depth about that. Um, hospice care and home health care. That was another thing is that I didn't quite realize home health care was covered under Part A as well. So there are some caveats to this. Um, for inpatient hospital care, the one thing that you need to know is that it covers the hospital stay but not the services provided by the physicians. So if you only have Part A, then you are responsible for the costs of the physicians who are rounding on you. Your, your meals are covered, a semi-private room is covered, um, the services by nursing, all of that's covered, but the doctor's services are not. And I think, if I remember correctly, also things like um, lab work and any kind of medical tests, that is not covered as well. That's going to be under Part B. Um, what you do need to know about how Medicare Part A covers uh, maybe a rehab stay at a skilled nursing facility is that you need to discharge there directly from the hospital. So the conversations that will come up is whether or not, and I say this for you or for a loved one, is whether or not you can go home safely with home health care. And yes, that is definitely preferred. Um, we don't like people being in the hospital for any period of time that they don't really need to be there if they can um, continue to improve at home with support services like home health care. So if you or a loved one um, would really benefit from a short-term stay in rehab, you have to advocate for that up front and you have to continue to advocate for that 
as you get closer to discharge planning. So I'll just give you a short story about what happened with my mom the last time she was in the hospital. Um, for those of you who don't know, she has kind of a working diagnosis of Parkinsonism. It's not quite meeting all criteria for Parkinson's disease, but there are a lot of symptoms that are similar. So uh, weakness issues, she doesn't really have the tremor, which is why she's not um, hitting all criteria for Parkinson's, um, but she has kind of generalized weakness, slow movement. Um, she has kind of an altered gait while walking, so sometimes she can shuffle her feet a little bit. Um, her arms don't swing when she walks, and she has kind of an expressionless face most of the time, which is called mask face. And so she's meeting a lot of the criteria. Um, but, you know, with that, she goes through periods where, I'm not quite sure why, I think it's where she's not eating very well and not staying hydrated enough. She can kind of have more progressive weakness. And so last time she was in the hospital, when um, the physical therapy first saw her, she could barely, they could barely get her to standing position. And so immediately they said that she needed to go to skilled nursing. Well, I was kind of taken by surprise on that one because she had been doing okay at home prior to this kind of more immediate thing. And so I was a little resistant to the skilled nursing at first. Um, but then thought, well, you know, that would be a chance for her to um, get more intensive therapy and really get back up on her feet before coming home. Well, a day or two later, um, I think that the um, case manager was having trouble getting insurance to approve her for skilled nursing. So a couple of days later, physical therapy apparently walked her down the hall with her rollator and, um, or walker and said, oh, well, she can walk. And so they started going with home health care planning. And I had to really push for and advocate for them to continue to pursue skilled nursing for her because I knew that she would really benefit more from that intensive therapy. Um, and so we did finally get that accomplished and she did get to go to um, a local SNF here and did get a little bit better. Um, definitely more, definitely made more improvement than she would have coming home with home health care at that point. So my <laughs> point in all this is that if she had come home with home health care and we had realized that she needed more intensive therapy at that point, it would have been more challenging to get her into a sniff because she wouldn't have discharged directly from the hospital. Part A wouldn't have covered it. Part B might have covered it, but we would have jumped through hoops trying to justify it. So if you or a loved one really needs some short-term rehab to get stronger after a prolonged illness, or um, post-surgery or something like that, you've got to advocate for getting that to be your discharge plan up front so that Medicare covers it and you don't have to jump through the hoops. Um, kind of the same thing with home health care. It's also covered under Part A, but you have to be discharging from a hospital to have it covered under Part A. So here are some of the costs that are associated with the hospitalization insurance that you may or may not be familiar with. There is a deductible um, for each benefits period. Um, so, you know, every year, just like, you know, your employer sponsored insurance, you have a deductible to meet. Um, after you've met the deductible, if you're hospitalized for up to 60 days, you don't have any copay. Um, from 60 to 90 days, you do have a fairly small copay of $400 per day. Once again, this is not covering the doctor services, it's just the hospitalization part. Um, if you go over 90 days, your copay goes up, but this is only if you have um, what are called lifetime reserve days remaining. So these are extra days above. Uh, three-month hospitalization that you would have, 
but you're limited to 60 of these days over the rest of your life. So if you have used up your 60 reserve days, then starting at day 90, um, day 91, you would be on the hook for the entire cost of hospitalization. Now there's some little workarounds to this. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, same thing with the skilled nursing is that you have to also know that you've got a limited number of days there because the goal is to get you in, get you stronger, and get you home. They don't want you staying there a long time, and you don't want to stay there a long time. So that's kind of why we have the cost share set up that way. Um, so the first 20 days, it's covered, although some Medicare Advantage plans might charge you a copay for those days. Just be aware of that. Um, then from days 21 to 100, you have a $200 copay per day. If you go over 100 days in, um, in the SNF, then you are going to pay the full price per day at that point, which varies by facility. So let's talk a little bit about Part B. Um, which of the following is included in Medicare Part B? And hopefully you have noted that yes, it's all of the above. Um, so Part B is your traditional health insurance type program. It covers all of those things that are needed to help treat and diagnose your condition. So most of your tests, um, lab work, all of those kind of things are going to be covered under this. You do have to find out, especially if you have um, Medicare Advantage plan, if certain things are covered up front. Um, so for example, my mom has had a scan, um, a CT scan that has been scheduled to help differentiate her diagnosis of Parkinsonism and try to figure out which variant it might be, but insurance doesn't cover it. So we've had to cancel it twice now um, because the providers thought they had the right codes in there to get it covered, but it gets kicked back um, every time. So. We're just having to go with a working definition right now or working diagnosis right now without being able to have a scan that might show more information. So just know that some things aren't going to be covered. Find out before you have the procedure done so you know if you're going to have to pay for it out of pocket or if you need to just forego it if possible. Um, Part B covers a lot of preventive services, which I'm going to show you on the next slide. It also covers things like durable medical equipment. Um, this would be like wheelchairs and walkers. And yes, you can purchase those out of pocket um, from Amazon or Walmart or what have you, but it's really nice if you can get it covered by your Medicare Part B. It also covers mental health services and sometimes covers um, outpatient prescription drugs. It just depends. I'm assuming here that it's probably going to cover something like antibiotics, maybe. So here are the whole host of preventive services that are available. And I'm, I honestly find it very overwhelming uh, that all of this is covered. So you can get things like a bone density scan, um, uh, mammograms are covered, uh, your vaccinations are covered. You get a yearly wellness visit. Um, also, I like to point out that if you um, have a new diagnosis of type 2 diabetes or end-stage renal disease, you get um, a certain number of visits with a dietitian who can help you figure out any dietary changes that you need to make to manage your condition. And there's lots more um, that's available. So I encourage you to go to the Medicare website and just see everything that's covered and make sure you're taking advantage of um, everything that you can. So now we're moving on to Medicare Part D, um, the prescription drug plan. So who offers Medicare Part D? And hopefully you know that this is actually just private insurance companies. Federal government does not provide the Part D coverage. It's the insurance companies that do. And, you know, with that, one of the things that you might be wanting to think about or consider is, um, you know, should you stick with original Medicare and buy a Part D plan 
or should you look into Medicare Advantage plans? So I want to just kind of compare and contrast the two. With So kind of the main difference is that with original Medicare, it includes Part A and Part B. Um, you can opt out of Part B. Don't do that. If you do and you decide to enroll later, then you will have to pay um, a late fee every year that you did not have Part B, um, it's 10% additional premium. So if you go without Part B, once you're eligible for five years, you're gonna pay 50% more per month than everybody else does. So don't do it. <laughs> um, the main thing with Original Medicare is that you can see any doctor or go to any hospital that takes Medicare. There's no exclusions there. So long as they take Medicare, you can go see them. You do have um, a 20% coinsurance uh, for most of your services, but we're gonna talk about supplemental insurance that you can buy to cover that in just a little bit. Um, the Medicare Advantage plans, what makes them unique is that they bundle all the services together. So they will include parts A and B, um, but they typically will also include prescription drug coverage. Not all do, so you want to um, really look at everything that's covered in the Advantage plan that you're considering and be sure that it includes prescription drug coverage or if you would have to buy a separate plan and just kind of take that into account. Um, some don't charge you any additional premium outside of Part B coverage premium. Some do have a little bit more premium that you pay for additional services or for more of your coinsurance being covered. Um, the difference here is that you usually will have to use in-network physicians and um, facilities. So you want to be sure that your preferred pro providers are covered. And if they're not, how much is it going to cost you to go see those providers? And sometimes the providers really won't even see you. Um, they may be reluctant to even try to file a claim or, you know, you will have to file a claim that it's out of network and get reimbursed and it just gets a little bit more complicated. So the main thing is with an Advantage plan is that you've got to figure out are your providers covered in their network or not. That's the challenging part. Um, but one of the benefits of an Advantage plan is that usually they include other services that are designed to keep you healthy so it will kind of lower costs overall. So many will include um, a vision, insurance, hearing, and dental services. You just have to check with each plan and see what's covered and what the levels are and if that's really going to, to help you out or not. So this was something that I didn't know about until my mom got into to Medicare age is the costs that are associated with it. Um, Part A doesn't have a premium, but it does have the coinsurance. Part B, the health insurance, um, the premium is currently $164, you know, almost $165 a month, kind of base. If you make a whole lot more money throughout your, you know, if you were, had a much higher level of income, then you might have to pay a little bit more. But for most people, it's going to be about $165 a month. It's anticipated to go up to about $175 in 2024. This is typically deducted from your Social Security check every month. You might not even realize it, but it's, it's taken out of your Social Security check unless you opt out of that auto deduction. Once again, don't do it. Just let it roll on out. Um, because that's, that's going to be better for you in the long run than having to pay a late fee to enroll later. Um, you do have deductibles and co-pays with part, um, part B and Part A. And then another thing I like to point out is you probably have heard something about the donut hole uh, for prescription drug coverage or getting into the gap. So 
your prescription drug coverage plans will pay for up to um, 4660 in to 2023. Um, this is for uh, the brand name drugs, not the generic drugs, but, but the brand name drugs. So if the total cost of your drugs goes above that amount, then you fall into what's called the gap. And during the gap, you have to pay 25% of the cost of the drug, and then the um, pharmacy will pay another percentage of that cost. Um, your insurance will pay a very small percent, and then there is another um, uh, refill fee that is charged as well. So to get out of the gap, your amount that you pay and the amount that the pharmacy pays outside of the um, small medication stocking fee, I think it's called, um, you have to get that total cost up to, I think it's somewhere between six and $7,000. Um, and then at that point, you fall into catastrophic drug coverage where your prescriptions are covered again. I would say that unless you are on multiple brand name drugs for which you can't get generic drugs, you probably won't reach that catastrophic phase, um, but there's a very good chance you're going to fall into the gap, and that probably will happen around July or August of each year. So I'm thinking of um, some of the popular anticoagulant therapies that are pretty pricey. Um, you typically will fall into the gap around July or August, um, depending on your coverage. So just kind of be aware of that with the prescription drug plans. All of a sudden, your, your uh, amount that you get charged goes up quite a bit. <laughs> um, but there are ways that you can get help paying for sometimes your um, Part B premiums, for your co-insurance, and things like that. Uh, you probably have heard about Medicare supplement plans or Medigap plans. The um, plans are standardized across the country and they um, are labeled from letters A through N and each one has certain benefits that are covered within that, which you can see on the screen here. I don't know a whole lot about these plans, but I do know that you have to take into consideration the care that um, you typically need for your conditions that might impact the plan that you have to get. So for example, I was talking to my dad a few months ago and he um, has rheumatoid arthritis and gout. And because of that and the routine um, visits that he has to have with his rheumatologist and probably some of the medications that he's on and maybe some of the tests that he has to get done, he has to go with a supplement plan that costs quite a bit more um, because of those conditions. So you really have to look carefully into these Medigap plans as far as which one's going to cover what you need um, so that you get the most advantage out of it because you will have to pay a you know, premium for these plans, but then they help cover that coinsurance and other costs. Another thing to think about is if you have a more limited income, you have a good chance of um, qualifying for one of the Medica Medicaid waiver programs. You might hear them called Quimby or Slimby, and these programs um, will allow Medicaid to cover the cost of your Part B premium. So that could be $165 or $175 back in your pocket. Plus, they also can help cover some of that coinsurance that you'll have with the other, um, with Parts A and Part B. So I know this gets really confusing. And to me, having to sort through all of that is a real challenge, especially the more um, conditions that you have, the more medications that you take, the more complex your care, it gets really hard to figure out which plan you need to go with. So there fortunately is some help out there um, to assist you in making these decisions. And I can't recommend this enough, but every state has a state health insurance program or SHIP 
and I've given you the website on the screen here for the Georgia SHIP program. They have a toll-free number that you can call and they will connect you with a Medicare, a certified Medicare advisor, SHIP advisor, who can help you um, sort through your different medical needs and how that's going to fit up with the different plans that are available in Georgia. So with open enrollment coming up, please, please, please reach out to the Georgia SHIP and um, get an appointment with an advisor who can help you figure out should you stick with original Medicare because there are certain advantages to that. Should you look at some of the advantage plans and if so, which ones? Do you need prescription drug coverage and if so, which plan is going to be best for you? And then, you know, do you qualify for some of those programs then that can help cover these costs? The SHIP advisors can help you with that. ACCA also has an on-site SHIP advisor. And when I was looking at their website this morning, I see that Louise Platter is the contact um, for the Benefits Counseling Program. And uh, this program is great because they can not only help you with some of those Medicare pieces, but they can help you determine if you might qualify for um, SNAP, as well as the Medicaid waiver programs, as well as maybe even that low-income heating um, and energy assistance program or LIHEAP. So all of these things can help you save money, um, but you don't know if you qualify until you, you ask, right? And so um, the Benefits Counseling Program, they can help you with a lot of those pieces. So do reach out to them. I've given you the email address there and also the website um, for uh, the SHIP program at ACCA. So just a reminder, open enrollment is coming up. And here are some resources that can also help you learn more about those Medicare supplement plans, what's, co what's covered in each, um, what Medicare as a whole covers. If you have any question about a service or a test that um, your doctor is scheduling, if it's going to be covered or not, then you can go to um, this website and find out more. And then if you want to know more about some of those costs associated with Medicare, I've given you the website for that too. So hopefully this has been a little bit helpful to you today. Once again, I apologize for all of the technology issues that I've had. I will also tell you that I had to record this twice because my microphone was muted the first time I called it in the program that I'm using to record it. So it's just been a technology gremlin day. I think it's post full moon. I don't know what's going on. But I hope this has been a little bit helpful. I hope this has raised some questions that you can ask um, so that you get the best Medicare plan for you for next year and that you take advantage of all of the services that are included, anything that you qualify for. Be sure you take advantage of it or you know, at least ask, will Medicare cover this? So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Dr. Clack is going to be your best bet to answer questions around Medicare, um, but then also contact the, the SHIP counselors. They are ready and eager and willing to help you in this open enrollment period. So you guys have a great uh, rest of the week. Have a great October, and I will see you in a couple of weeks for the Nutritious Bites seminar where we're going to be talking about low-carb diets. Are they worth the hype? You guys have a great rest of your day.